Most people try to avoid small talk. You know, the chit chat that tends to accompany awkward introductions, boring social gatherings, and the lost but not forgotten networking event. But it doesn't have to be that way. Small talk can be artful and dare I say, enjoyable. It facilitates conversation, foundational trust, as well as long-term personal and business relationships. But most importantly, it is a skill that can be learned, developed, and enjoyed. And in this video, we'll cover three ways to make memorable small talk that gets you more business. I'm Benjamin Kowalski with Freight360, where we provide the latest transportation sales tips and training videos to help you reach your goals faster. If you're new here, make sure you go ahead and hit the subscribe button. And all of the links and details will be found in the description box below. And for more free content, please be sure to add our weekly podcast, Freight360, to your playlist. Let's jump into it. Number one, everyone's favorite conversation topic, themselves. And this advice is nothing new. It dates back to Dale Carnegie and his classic book, How to Win Friends and Influence People. Because generally speaking, people like to talk about who they are and the experiences they've had. Here are some of my favorite open-ended conversation starters to get people chatting about their favorite subject. Tell me about yourself. What's your story? What's a project you're working on that's a personal passion for you? What's been your high point and low point for the week so far? Each of those simple questions has the potential to transform a boring conversation into a meaningful exchange. Number two, curiosity drives great conversations. I had a mentor once tell me, Ben, there's something interesting about everybody and it's up to those curious enough to find out what that is. Whenever I've been at a loss for words, that quote comes to mind. And without grilling a prospect I might be on the phone with, I will ask and probe about maybe their hobbies, their interests, their preferences, recent travels, a pet, an accomplishment, maybe a dislike, and any other unique experiences they may have had that they're willing to share. Because once we connect on that topic, then I'll try to keep the conversation momentum with follow-up questions or possibly a relevant personal observation of my own until the discussion dips naturally. And then I'll try to seamlessly transition to another related subject to avoid you know, a dead spot in the conversation. What's important to remember here is you do not want to force a good conversation. You want to nurture it and gently direct it to ensure it's a benefit for everybody participating. Now that's a skill that you'll get better with with practice. It is worth pointing out though, that you should avoid polarizing topics like politics, religion, or personal health issues. Which brings us to number three, be fully present and engaged. If you follow our channel, you've heard me say this over and over again. God gave us two ears and one mouth. Use them proportionately. In other words, listen twice as much as you're talking. The best communicators are the best active listeners because instead of focusing on what they want to say next, they're so tuned into the conversation that their follow-up questions just come up naturally. That's the kind of listening that is more than simply hearing or self-affirming. It's really paying attention and striving to understand. And it can be deepened by asking simple clarifying questions like, why did that occur? How did that come about? Or maybe who else was involved? Because those simple questions help that person go deeper to the core of that discussion. So in other words, at this level of listening, you're not simply listening for something you want to talk about or something to offer advice on or trying to think of something intelligent or sounding smart in response because it's not about your agenda. 
It is a level of engagement that is about helping your prospect get to what they really want to talk about. And then you are really just along to facilitate the ride. Now, if you follow these three steps, the people you talk to will remember you better and more fondly because a thoughtful conversationalist makes others feel important and valued. And they'll be more likely to remember that feeling instead of the exact words you have said. Because that feeling, it's foundational to building trust, establishing rapport, and building relationships. Remember, People will rarely remember exactly what you've said, but they will always remember how you made them feel.